Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and well, the date is September 1st of 2017 and Earth had yet another close flyby by an asteroid that could potentially destroy a civilization. Today we're going to briefly talk about this asteroid known as Florence and something else that we discovered about it very recently in September of 2017. Welcome to What The Math. So first of all, this is actually a simulation in Universe Sandbox that shows you all of the potentially dangerous asteroids, or not all, but some of the potentially dangerous asteroids that we've discovered in the last few years. And uh, these are also known as near-Earth asteroids, basically asteroids that kind of go in between the asteroid belt past Mars and uh, come as close as the Earth orbit. We can kind of actually enable the trails here just so you can see some of them better. And uh, we can even look at orbits just to kind of show you how diverse their orbits really are. Now today we're going to be talking about one such asteroid known as Florence that recently passed by relatively close to Earth in terms of astronomical terms, although the reality is that it was about 4.4 million miles or I guess about 6 or over 6 million kilometers away from Earth, which is relatively far, I guess. And uh, this asteroid was actually relatively large as well. It was about 4 kilometers in, uh, in diameter. So it would have actually, if it ever collided with the planet Earth, it would have caused some major devastation on the surface, very likely causing another extinction event or possibly at least destroying a few um, civilizations on our planet. So, let's actually maybe go to a simulation of planet Earth for a second, just to demonstrate how far away I actually passed by. But uh, for us, usually, this also means that there is a slight danger that in some of the few uh, future returns when it comes back to uh, the vicinity of Earth, it might actually collide with the planet. But in the next thousand or so years, we're pretty safe. The closest uh, approach next time is going to be in 2500s, so we're relatively safe in that in that sense. All right, so we're going to place a random asteroid at the location where Florence has actually passed. So that's about right here. And we're now are also going to zoom into it just to kind of see uh, what it looks like and also talk about what we've recently discovered. And what we actually discovered about Florence is that it turns out that it also has a couple of its own moons. So this asteroid is about uh, six-ish or maybe even seven kilometers in diameter. So basically, if I were to compare it to something human-made, let's maybe compare it to the Great Pyramids. There is the Great Pyramid in comparison to this asteroid. We can actually collide it with the asteroid for fun. There is the third stage of a um, Saturn V rocket and there is the New Horizons mission. So let's just zoom into them just to see how big this thing actually is. And we're going to slowly collide them all together. Okay, that was not slow at all. Let's try this again. And here we go. So here's the pyramid. So let's place Juno spacecraft here as well because it's a little bit smaller in terms of the actual size. And that's the very large asteroid that zoomed by us uh, in September of 2017. So as you can see, it actually has quite uh, quite some gravity here. Now, it has two of its own moons, and we're going to place these as well. And I just kind of placed them for comparison right here, even though this is not their exact orbit, but they basically orbit around Florence in a very uh, similar fashion. So this one here, the closer one, takes about eight hours or so uh, to orbit around Florence once, and its size is about 300 meters or approximately 1,000 feet. And Florence, too, is um, orbiting around uh, Florence, the main asteroid, every 22 to 27 hours, and its size is about 100 meters. So these two uh, moons are basically kind of... Uh, or I guess what they show to us is that um, just like we predicted, about two-thirds of all near-Earth asteroids actually have their own moons. Now, there's many explanations for why they have two moons, 
or not two moons, but why they have moons in general. But one of those explanations is obviously the collisions, which many of these asteroids have experienced. And Florence does have um, at least a couple of um, very large impact areas that we've already seen. We can actually try to maybe create one just for fun here too, by launching an asteroid into Florence at a relatively fast speed. So let's actually see what this looks like. And okay, that didn't really create anything and that was way, way too fast. But I guess the actual creator will not be made because this is not a round object in this game. So, um, so there is craters, there is asteroids that may have been created through these collisions. But it's also possible that these um, moons were actually created through what's known as the um, Yarp effect. And this is actually something I've talked about in one of the previous videos, I believe last year. You can check it out uh, and find out more about this effect. But it's essentially an effect that creates uh, binary asteroids and asteroid moons because sun is, or the solar radiation is constantly pushing um, at the asteroid and makes it spin faster and faster and faster through time until it starts falling apart. And maybe these pieces actually just fell apart because the asteroid approaches the sun relatively close. And so what we're going to do now is that we're going to just wait for Florence to come relatively close to our planet Earth and it's very likely actually is going to collide with our planet. So I'm going to accelerate time here. And we're just going to wait for it to approach the planet and essentially cause a little bit of destruction. Now, our planet is slowly attracting the asteroid. You can kind of see the speed increasing here about meter per second every day or so. Um, and at this distance, the actual gravity from our planet is not particularly strong, but it is strong enough to influence the orbit of this asteroid every time it comes so close to us. Uh, but fortunately for us, it's going to be quite a lot of uh, passages before it comes even closer. And it may never even hit our planet because it might end up just kind of being thrown out of the system completely. So all of this is due to chance and we'll, we need to do a lot of calculations to figure out what's going to happen to it. Now, while Florence is flying toward Earth, let me mention something else. So, in October of 2017, and this for me this is in the future, for you maybe it's relatively soon, there's actually going to be another close pass by of uh, a rock that's actually going to pass between the Moon and the Earth. And this time it's going to be much, much smaller, only about maybe 15 to 30 meters or about 100 feet in size. Um, so essentially it's a rock size of a house, and it might even pass by as close as the geostationary satellites around our planet. So this might be a little bit more scary in terms of it actually hitting the planet and possibly even uh, disturbing some of the satellites. But chances of, it, um, of this asteroid actually colliding with the planet Earth are still pretty low. There's actually quite a lot of asteroids that do pass by close to Earth, and sometimes we don't even see them until the last moment. But uh, what's really important is that, uh, or I guess what's important to understand is that the chance of them colliding is still very, very high. First of all, our planet is actually relatively small compared to the amount of space that we have here. So the chance of two objects being in the same location uh, at the same time is very, very low. And second of all, our moon is actually really, really good at deflecting asteroids. It's, it's a great tool for disturbing asteroid orbits and basically preventing them from colliding with planet Earth. And this can be kind of seen with all of these collisions that you see on the surface. So our moon has actually been really good at protecting us from uh, the asteroid collisions by taking the blow instead of us. All right, so Florence is slowly approaching. Now the speed has actually increased to about 250 meters per second. We're going to wait a little bit and wait for the collision and see what actually happens when it gets closer to Earth. And while we're actually watching this, you may notice that the actual orbit of the asteroid is being slightly deviated by the moon's gravity. So right around now, it's actually going to be bending this way, which is a pretty cool effect that our moon uh, has when it comes to protecting planet Earth. So let me just show it to you again. If I accelerate time a little bit, you'll see that when the moon is here, the orbit of the asteroid is going to be deflected a little bit to the right, meaning that it might end up missing Earth. And maybe not. Let's see if it actually does hit Earth. It's now moving at a pretty fast speed of 
oh, two kilometers per second. It's almost two, two kilometers per second. Now it's almost three, and it's accelerating faster and faster because it is now very, very close to planet Earth. But as you can see, even though from that distance it was going straight toward Earth, the moon has actually deflected the asteroid quite a lot. And chances are it might actually miss the planet. It's definitely approaching from a very unusual um, orbital parameter here, but let's just decelerate time again and see what happens. And look at that. The moon saved us again. Florence totally missed. Very, very interesting and very unusual. Now let's actually zoom to Florence for a second. And you'll see that the moons are still actually here, but the actual asteroid missed. All right, well, just for fun, let's actually... Uh, stop everything, stop all velocities, and have it collide with Earth anyway. But this was actually a pretty good simulation just to see how our moon is absolutely incredible at protecting our planet from these dangerous collisions. And we're about to see what happens when Florence, which is actually a very large asteroid but very tiny compared to our planet Earth, collides with a planet at a speed of about 9 kilometers per second. And here we go. And there's that explosion, absolutely marvelous and very destructive. As you can see, this would probably take uh, a huge chunk out of our planet and basically create this huge explosion that would cover a lot of East Africa, the entire Arabian Peninsula, and possibly destroy India and Persia and create tsunamis, lots and lots of tsunamis. So there's that destruction that was created by this asteroid. And essentially, this is what the moon prevented. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to do in this video. Talk a little bit about Florence, simulate the collision with it, and give you an idea of how our moon protects us from, from these asteroids. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys these watching space videos, and potentially support this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And because we stopped all velocities, the moon is actually falling onto our planet too. This explosion will not go so well for our planet Earth. <laughs>